Hi. Today I'm going to talk about um, a really cross-cultural uh, experience. The book, the movie and the TV series of the Ipcrest farm. Starting with the book, paperback version. I had the hardback version many years ago when I first read it. Len Dayton, who wrote it, he had a very varied background, uh, but he'd never worked for the intelligence services. Uh, but he nevertheless was able to uh, reproduce the workings of government departments. And he did a lot of research, and what he did uh, was hang around archives and libraries until uh, they got used to him and he'd gradually go to p parts of them that he wasn't supposed to and find out uh, information that he shouldn't really have had. And he, um, he did this very successfully to the point that uh, some of his later books uh, on military history, Blitzkrieg and Fighter in particular, were very well accepted. Uh, but his fictional work, uh, If Cross Fire was his first book, um, and he had uh, some themes that were uh, quite um, prominent at the time. One was uh, brainwashing from the Korean War. Manchurian Candidate was um, uh, another book featuring it. And um, The Brain Drain, which was the... Um, leaving, uh, the scientists leaving our country to go and work in the United States and uh, in the Commonwealth because of better conditions over there. So the main character of the Ipcrest file, uh, it's first person narration, so his name's never given, but we know he uh, comes from Burnley, Lancashire. He worked for military intelligence uh, as an NCO. And then at the start of the book, he is, um, he's left MI, uh, his boss was uh, Colonel Ross, and he's moved over to uh, a small elite civilian intelligence organization headed by Major Dolby. And uh, he's introduced to the rest of the guys and the... Um, problem they're working on is um, missing scientists. So uh, he gets stuck into that and um, finds uh, some leads. Um, there's a, a, a section where they go to uh, the Lebanon, Beirut, and uh, there's local color there. They do um, a recovery operation there using, using a sticky bomb and uh, bring the scientists back. Uh, the, the plot thickens uh, and they go into uh, more of the um, the network of the uh, scientists but then the scene switches to uh, Tokwi which is a fictitious Pacific island with a, an American base and uh, the main character and his boss Dolby and his secretary, uh, uh, the main character secretary, Jean Tonneson, um, are there as ob British government observers. Now, for me, I think Len Dayton put this in. He'd worked in America, and I think he just wanted to exercise his um, knowledge of American vernacular, of American fashions, and uh, the American way of life. And uh, it, it's kind of a distraction, really. Uh, it's a bit like a drum solo, you know, no matter how well it's done, it's an unnecessary distraction. Um, nevertheless, he um, he starts a relationship with Jean, um, and, and, and she figures a bit later, um, because he is accused of being a traitor while on this island. He's, he's, he's set up, and um, he's put on a flight and, and anesthetized, unconscious, and um, when he wakes up, he's uh, in Hungary, or so it seems, and he's subject to um, a regime of sleep deprivation, cold, and um, 
uh, being forced to uh, memorize and repeat large tracts of uh, intellig unintelligible uh, polemic and uh, uh, always um, uncertain as, as to um, what's required. But he, he's also already been aware of the uh, brainwashing uh, element to the, um, the whole thing. So he's a bit on his guard. Anyway, he manages to escape and finds out that far from being in Hungary, he's actually in um, London. And uh, uh, he, he then finds out where the um, headquarters of the bad guys is a, a, a guy called Jay and his um, main muscle is a guy called House Martin. But his old boss Ross is already on the case and uh, it's all wrapped up at the end and uh, the bad guys are, are kind of not really brought to justice because they end up working with the British government except Dolby who turns out to, to have been a traitor and he, he uh, unfortunately dies in a car accident. Now um, the book is very very well written it, it's um, it, it, it's full of uh, humour it, it's flashes of um, wit and um, it's very well researched and in fact there's some uh, appendixes um, which give um, real technical information such as uh, it, it's an actual War Office document on the handling of 38 revolvers and so on. And there's some interesting things like he uses a pencil to um, neutralise a lock and there's a footnote that the, this method has been withdrawn from the manuscript. And uh, I rather suspect that it's um, just a, a kind of writer's device to get out of a tricky situation. Um, that uh, actually you can't use a pencil to get through a lot. Anyway, so um, we'll now come to the film, the movie. The book was very successful and uh, it was at the time of all the spy, spy novels um, and they decided to film it. It was in fact, it was the same producers as the Bond movies. Michael Caine uh, starred and uh, because it's a movie, they had to name the uh, the main character, so he was given the name Harry Palmer. And uh, he, at the, at the beginning, he's uh, on a surveillance operation. He, he still works for Ross, and he's called in and told he's being transferred to the um, civilian organisation WOC brackets P uh, under Dolby. So off he goes. Uh, with a little bit of insolence uh, ensuing and um, meets uh, Major Dolby who is played by Nigel Green one of our uh, um, absolutely top character actors at the time and he, he does an impeccable performance as um, Dolby who ha has a very military bearing um, unfortunately Nigel Green committed suicide uh, uh, not too long after this uh, and it was a real loss to the movie industry so uh, he meet um, Harry meets the rest of the team in the small um, agency um, the office uh, is, is kind of run by a woman called Alice um, there's a, a guy called Philip Chilcott Oates who Chico who is uh, a hooray Henry and is pretty ineffective um, and, and was described as such in the book and uh, also um, Courtney and um, so the Gene Tonneson character is now Courtney played by Sue Lloyd and um, Harry's a bit of a ladies man and uh, he encounters uh, Courtney searching his flat she's been ordered to by Dolby and uh, he doesn't um, really get too upset about this and offers to make a dinner. And uh, obviously there's an attraction there. So uh, uh, Harry is a bit of a jack the lad really and he, he decides that the uh, Dolby way of doing things is a bit too um, 
uh, complicated. So he uses his old contacts at Scotland Yard and finds out where Jay, the uh, the guy they suspect for these kidnappings, um, uh, uh, parks his car and um, delivers a message to him. And um, eventually there's a transfer and th throughout the early parts of the film, there's somebody following Harry, a, a guy with uh, spectacles. And during the transfer uh, in, the, in the underground car park at Hyde Park, um, this guy springs out and Harry shoots him. And it turns out he's an American asset and he's on the radar then of the CIA. And um, there's pressure put on him and sometime later he is um, taken at gunpoint and he ends up in uh, captivity, uh, seemingly in an East European location. Uh, and the brainwashing, unlike in the book, is he's in a small room, uh, there's loud discordant whining noises being played and there's bright flashing lights and uh, images being projected. Now, at the time of the movie, this was considered brainwashing. In the uh, 80s and 90s, you'd pay money for it and it'd be a, called a rave. So uh, he manages to uh, defeat or partially defeat the brainwashing by secreting a nail which he uses for pain to break through the uh, to divert concentration from the uh, conditioning but um he does manage to escape and all the time um jay is trying to condition him to obey his voice he then uh harry palmer contacts uh his boss and also ross there's a confrontation and uh he shoots the traitor and uh, that's really basically the the plot. It was all all takes place in London, unlike the the book. Um, really great film, classic. I, I still like it. I watch it uh, now and again. I've got the DVD. Uh, iconic film for Michael Caine. That and Zulu really helped make him the star he is today. So we come to the TV series now. During lockdown, some friends of mine were um, doing movie security in Liverpool, and one of them said he'd been working on a film or a TV series called The Ipcrest File. He didn't know anything about it. And I, I picked up at this, oh, wow, The Ipcrest File, and looked it up. And sure enough, they were making it. And uh, lots of uh, Liverpool locations, but also in, I think it was Prague, and so on. Anyway, so it... Uh, appears on TV uh, on ITV um, uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, started watching it. The star, the Harry Palmer role, was played by Joe Cole, who previously be, been in Peaky Blinders. He wore the spectacles, but he didn't use the Cockney accents from the movie. I think this was wise because he would have looked like kind of a Mike Yarwood impersonation. Uh, in the film, he is engaged in, he's a sergeant in the army, he's engaged in black market activities in Berlin. And he um, gets caught by RMP and he's put into military prison. Now, while there, the plot about the kidnapped scientists is... is um, occupying the attention of uh, the intelligence services and they find that there's a, a fixer in or human trafficker in Berlin, Otto, who may uh, know something about it. When you look in the file, he worked with Harry Palmer. So the boss of this intelligence agency, uh, Dolby, played by Tom Hollander, uh, terrific performance. Now, in the movie, Nigel Green had a very military-bearing sort of um, uh, upper-class guards officer type of uh, <coughs> manner, excuse me. Tom Hollander, although Dolby, uh, we, we do know he's got a military background, uh, he plays a more of a civil servant. Um, and uh, his wife actually um, believes he works for the Board of Trade. 
so he's more of that persona but nevertheless he's got a steel interior so uh, he goes to the uh, military prison which was actually uh, a location in Liverpool uh, in the heritage market at Stanley Dock which amused me and um, uh, tries to debrief Palmer but Palmer realises that there's something in it for him and uh, makes a bargain that if they release him he'll, he'll help them so they initially temporarily release him but then he gets a job goes to Berlin there's a lot of skullduggery and so on but then he ends up uh, working for the department and the next thing they go to Beirut Lebanon and uh, following the trail of these disappeared uh, scientists. Then, like the book, the uh, scene shifts to uh, the Pacific and to a US base. Now, there's already been um, quite a bit of action with the CIA in London. The, the uh, uh, chief of station in London has been involved and um, particularly um, having meetings with um, uh, Jean, Jean Courtney, who is a, a mixture of uh, Jean Thomason and Courtney from the book and the uh, film, played by Lucy Boynton, who uh, gives a terrific performance. Um, her style, her hairstyle, uh, got a lot of comments in the press the way she looked, and uh, she is one of, undoubtedly one of the stars of this series. So. Um, they go off to uh, the American base uh, to watch this uh, nuclear test and as in the book he um, is, is framed and uh, ends up being brainwashed by what he's told are the Chinese. Uh, when he manages to escape and it's a similar type of brainwashing to the book except they use drugs and chemicals as well uh, because we know a lot more about um, psychedelics and things than they did in the 60s mk ultra and that kind of thing so um he escapes and again he finds out he's in england and um now big twist in the um in the tv series from the other two is that the plot really revolves around assassination of jfk by disaffected cia um, officers who are resentful about the Bay of Pigs and uh, JFK is coming to London to meet uh, Harold Macmillan and they actually use uh, archive footage for this because it did happen and uh, Harry is uh, somehow inveigled into the residence and he's been conditioned to uh, find a weapon that's been hidden there and to shoot uh, JFK now uh, he manages to partially break the conditioning and also uh, be convinced by Dolby and he, sh he doesn't shoot Dolby, doesn't shoot JFK, surprise, surprise, but shoots the traitor who in this case is the Minister of Defence. Uh, now it may seem a very strange plot or, or a weird plot it's no more strange really than a lot of the conspiracy theories about the death of JFK uh, including what really happened to JFK nobody knows and even uh, President Trump uh, ordered the CIA to release their, their uh, remaining files on it and they wouldn't do it they actually defied the president uh, but there's no conspiracy so uh, that, that was the plot there uh, some of the other characters in the TV series, uh, Chico, who in the book was a Hooray Henry, in the TV is uh, a professional intelligence officer, and uh, even though he is upper class, he's very effective. Alice, who in the book and film was a kind of your typical office harridan, um, is played as a woman who had served in SOE and had parachuted into France. And... Uh, in a very memorable scene displays her skills and uh, it, it was really really well done and uh, it, it, it really worked worked well so uh, in a nutshell that's the the book 
the uh, film and the TV series. Now, when I was putting this together um, and talk, talking about the book, it made me realise that I didn't really understand the plot. That all these years, I read the book in the 60s and I've read it several times since and enjoyed it uh, immensely, but I, the plot doesn't really make sense. Uh, the motive of Jay for kidnapping and then uh, brainwashing these scientists uh, is never really explained. What, what, where's the where's the gain? Where's the financial gain for it? So um, it's it's interesting that uh, a book can hold your attention so well, but then you find out really it doesn't make that much sense. But I love the press. Um, the book still I think is a classic. The movie is terrific, it's one of my favourite movies, and the TV series was a delight, it was very well done. Now, I don't know if they're going to film any of his other uh, Harry Palmer books. Uh, the next one in the series, Horse Underwater, was never filmed, mainly because it's even more convoluted than Ipcrest. Funeral in Berlin has been filmed with Michael Caine, great film, um, they could do that again. Billion Dollar Brain was filmed. Uh, directed by Ken Russell, who was mad as a bag of frogs and made a real mess of it. And uh, he, he wanted to make like an, an artistic film. Uh, it, it was just a mess. Best forgotten. Uh, they did a couple of uh, more recent films filmed in Russia with Harry Kane brought back as a kind of um, uh, old and bold, um, really bad uh, you know, sort of, it would have been best to let the franchise die back then. But there's hope. Maybe the TV people will do a further uh, series. I hope so. And that's my Ipcrest experience.